Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello. How is everybody? We are going to boldly go where no one has gone before. Again. I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I'm guessing by the time these come out, although I might have recorded them in, out of order, I'll put them up in order, but I might start with the video game first, the Star Trek Fleet Command. I've discussed the original series, and my love for it, my understanding of the times it was in, and I've discussed The Next Generation, which eventually overtook the original series in almost every, every category. And I give the first couple of seasons of The Next Generation a little shaky, or, but eventually it's an amazing show. The transition to Deep Space Nine fascinated me. They took the, I think it's fifth season of The Next Generation and introduced a space station. And it's Terraknor, Deep Space Nine. And they show a commander, not even a captain, who has a little bit of a history with Picard, although Picard doesn't know it. Um, commander Sisko's wife was killed by the Borg attack, and they're keeping that story flowing. And it was a nice transition. You got character leaving the original or the Next Generation show going on to Deep Space Nine, which they would do again and again, I think. Hmm. I really appreciated the show. It came out in 1993. It had a great cast, some one or two and maybe three come from the next generation and they come in and out. But one is the chief. Just great cast. Avery Brooks, Renee Arbor Jonas, whatever, Terry Farrell. Terry Farrell should have been a Wonder Woman back in the day. She was just perfect. However, Avery Brooks, Avery Brooks steals the show. He's so talented. His presence is felt from the beginning to the end. I've watched something recently, and he's a little out there these days. But I give him props. Uh, even the uh, the actor who played his kid did some amazing episodes. I, in a way, appreciate Deep Space Nine more than I do The Next Generation. I just give The Next Generation the props for actually taking the torch and doing something with it. You know, you can't say, I don't think you could say you can go from the original series to Deep Space Nine without the next generation. So, it's just like in rewatchability, the interest in the shows, the themes, it's just a little bit better in my opinion. And eventually the commander becomes a captain. It introduces one of the best spaceships ever, the Defiant which still to this day might be my favorite Star Trek ship. The battles, the scale, the the threat and the presence, the weight of it felt more in tune, more real. That there was more to lose here rather than the next generation. So they transitioned in almost the last season or the season before last of Next Generation. Deep Space Nine hits, and I'm watching every week. My friends, it's just great. They hit some amazing strides on the show. One one aspect of the show blew me away. I mentioned it, I think, in the original series. There's a time authority of some sort, and apparently someone goes back in time to the original series. And it has to do with the Tribbles. It's one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek ever. It uses the CGI and new technology and 
cuts them into the original show. They do some awesome stuff. Tie everything in. Characters meeting other characters, standing next to them, being involved in episodes of the original series that you know, like the back of your hand. And they're inserted in there, and it just looks amazing. Uh, so, this is a great continuation. It takes Gene Roddenberry's themes and improves upon them, I believe. This was a different atmosphere. It felt different. You're going to get more of a political but wartime aspect of the show. And believe it or not, as someone who's an atheist and who's very outspoken, they had, they had themes with religion <clears throat> and him being a... When I say him, I meant Captain Sisko. Him being a uh, religious figure. And they introduce aliens that are worshipped. They live in the wormhole. And they have an interest in Cisco. And it's just a very deep connection between the characters. You have the changeling. is played by one of the best actors to ever be on Star Trek. Um... The one who played Kira Nerys, I think it's Nana Visitor. Just amazing performances. Cole Meany, who's been on other stuff that I love. I feel bad he's had some troubles. But you look at Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It takes over from the next generation. Uh, I believe in the fifth season going into its sixth. And for me, it seamlessly passes the torch. You get the Defiant in the third season of D Space Nine, and it becomes a staple to this day. There's not much not to like about this show when you're a fan. I mean, I could see, you know, United Trekkie, and I was engrossed in it. I think it's one of the most accessible of all the shows. There's a real connection between Cisco and his son. You know, they lost their mother. The connections between the son and the people on the station. Villains who are friends. Friends who are villains. It's got an amazing cast of good guys and bad guys. And just that enough in between that you're not sure. And it's hard to pull it off in a, you know, a, a Star Trek setting, if you ask me. There's a presence on from everybody that you feel. I think Voyager, which I'll talk about next, is the defining vision of exploration of the original show. A five-year mission, and they are lost and have to get home, and I think it's amazing. The next generation was a... You settled into it. It's a place that... We, was alive the station was a another character in the beginning they play with it a lot and they bring it back every once in a while the space station is created by the Cardassians who are a semi-evil conquering race who have been in some agreements with Bajor which is now own owns the station and all of a sudden the Federation comes in to see if they want to bring him in and they discover a wormhole that could be used and it was considered stable to some extent. So now the Cardassians want to come back in. And the station always had problems. It was Cardassian technology, got to be merged with uh, Starfleet technology. You got Bajorans who are coming up and trying to be an independent planet, not... Um, in debt to the Federation, so to say. There's so much going on. It lives and breathes, unlike any of the other Star Trek shows, in my opinion. It's a place to live and settle down and be in uh, a situation where the other ships don't give you. Like, yes, I love Next Generation, the original series. And you've got 10 forward, and they've created these places in the ship that 
people play cards or they drink or they go to the hollow decks. This had all that, but it was a real home. It had commerce and uh, the tailor, Garrick, one of the great actors on the show. Uh, Garrick is his character's name. I'm not sure what his um, real name is. Uh, Quark, you got all the staples and done in an atmosphere that lives and breathes. It has its own personality. So I think Deep Space Nine has a special place in Star Trek. There's going to be some debate over it, I, I guess. But I can't fault the show on almost any criteria. It doesn't make the mistakes the next generation made, which are very minor. But they have a place in Star Trek. And sometimes they're charming, like the original show. And I've talked about the original show, you know, Spock's brain. I mean, there's just some stupidity going on. But the underlying themes, Gene Roddenberry's vision, D Space Nine really pulls it off. It gives you a similar yet different enough setting and atmosphere that you can feel it's another place in the Star Trek lore. Now, when I eventually get to Star Trek Enterprise, with Scott Bakula, that changes. And eventually they kind of make it work, but it starts off a little rocky and the theme song sucks. The opening song. Deep Space Nine, opening song. Uh, what they did to expand the universe is um, uh, up there with what the original show wanted to do. It's got its own niche. It fits in. It tied in well. It was transitioned perfectly, in my opinion. You got this unique circumstances, and they even play off of um, eugenics. And there's just all the themes that are hit right. And like I said, when you've got a setting that lives and breeds, it has its own personality. Terok Noah, Space Station, it's D Space Nine. It makes it that more special. And you've got its time travel and its um, techno babble type stuff. And it's a family show. It's, that's hard to believe, but the others weren't. Although there were themes. Picard didn't like children, had to soften up. This, the captain has to deal with his son with no mom. He's meeting women here and there. You know, he's a love interest, uh, one or two throughout the show. How does he deal with it? What does the son do? The son grows up on the show. You watch him as his little kid and to this man. And one of the best episodes is where, I wish I knew the name, but the actor who plays uh, Candyman in the horror movie plays the son older. And the son has to save Cisco's life or get him out of this temporal accident he's in. It's heartbreaking. It's riveting. It's some of the best acting in any of the Star Treks ever. Even the movies. It, I hope it won awards and it should. It's that special of an episode. And it's so special that I can't remember the fucking name of it. And the actor. And that's why you do these things. And I just like to turn the mic on and stoned and let go. I guess that's a drawback. But. Watch Star Trek D Space Nine if you have any interest in Star Trek. I think it is a unique experience that takes everything from all the lore of Star Trek and does it well, exceptionally well. The cast, everything comes together, the chemistry, the camaraderie from the characters, the dilemmas between a father and a son. It just hits a lot of tropes with class and race. It's just really top-notch. One of my favorites of the Star Trek, although they're all great in my opinion, so it's tough for me to choose, but Deep Space Nine is a go-to for me, rewatchable, just uh, the Defiant too, the ship is just blows me away. So I recommend it, if you're a Trekkie or not, you can give it a shot. You don't need to find that transition period and figure out what's going on with Deep Space Nine. I mean, the Next Generation or the original. I think it has a good enough story and 
sets it up pretty well get you going you're on your feet moving with the story great writing visual effects everything comes together uh and almost perfection in my opinion star trek d space nine watch it i'll talk to everybody soon stay healthy